A new paper published in March of this year, 2022, showed that the combination of glycine and NAC supplementation in mice extended their lifespan by a whopping 24%. So in this video, we'll go through the background research on glycine and NAC supplementation. We'll have a deep dive into this new paper, and then I'll share with you if it changes anything for my supplement stack. Let's get into it. As we age, our levels of a powerful antioxidant called glutathione appear to go down, and this is a problem because glutathione is a critical regulator of oxidative stress and our immune function. But glycine and NAC are critical building blocks for glutathione, and we can see from a 2021 human pilot study that the combination of NAC and glycine, it can correct the glutathione deficiency. So after glycine and NAC were supplemented for 24 weeks in older adults, it corrected the lower levels of glutathione in the blood. This is fantastic because we can see from a 2002 paper that as we age, the oxidative stress, it increases, but our body, it seems to cope okay with it until we reach 45 years old, where we reach a tipping point and the body can't cope anymore. Our glutathione levels from that stage decrease. So by supplementing with NAC and glycine, it looks like we can support our glutathione levels and keep them at a healthy level. But that begs the question, if we're trying to boost glutathione, why not just take glutathione supplements directly? The trouble is, over-the-counter glutathione supplements, they are of limited value because they're quickly broken down in our environment. So by the time that we take the glutathione supplement in, most of it would have already broken down. This has led to some supplement companies creating liposomal versions of glutathione. Overall, in the liposomal form, the glutathione, it can be absorbed, but the trouble is it bypasses all of the body's checks and balances, and it can directly get into our cells, which can be incredibly dangerous. Since the body can't regulate the liposomal glutathione, in theory, toxic levels can build up. Instead, what we're looking for is a perfect balance between oxidants and antioxidants. This was highlighted in the landmark 2009 paper titled The Hallmarks of Aging. In this paper, the authors say that oxidants, they can be regarded as a stress-elicited survival signal aimed at compensating for the progressive deterioration associated with aging. However, as our age advances, the levels of oxidants increase in an attempt to maintain survival until they betray the original purpose and eventually make the whole situation worse, worsening the age-associated damage. So by supplementing with the building blocks of glutathione, we can make sure that our glutathione levels are well supported and importantly, our body can actually regulate the levels of glutathione. Personally, until there's long-term human safety data on liposomal glutathione, I will not touch it. So, an argument can be made that supporting our levels of glutathione is a good idea, that it can possibly make us more resilient against diseases. So let's test that idea. In 2001, there was a paper published on COVID-19 patients. It wanted to see whether supporting our metabolism would improve COVID-19 recovery. It gave half of the patients a combination of supplements to support their metabolism, and this included the building blocks of glutathione. What they found is that the patients that took the combined metabolic activators recovered from COVID-19 a whopping three days faster. This is really exciting. It backs up the idea that if we support our metabolism, then hopefully we can be more resilient against diseases. And in terms of lifespan extension, we've got a robust paper from the Interventions Testing Program showing that glycine supplementation, it increased lifespan by 4 to 6% in both males and female mice. And that leads us onto this new paper. The new paper wanted to look at the combination of both glycine and NAC, not just glycine alone. This study gave half of the mice placebo and the other half a combination of glycine and NAC. And importantly, the mice used here were called black six mice. This is important because black six mice are the most inbred strain of mice used in research. So this is important. We are not inbred. So we can't always correlate these findings to humans. And in this study, only 32 mice were used. So relatively small numbers. But what we can see is that the mice who were receiving the glycine and NAC supplements. They increased their lifespan by 24%, and importantly, this happened in both males and females. We can see this increase quite clearly here in the graph. 
Now, when I was reading the discussion of this paper, a few crucial things popped out to me. So from unpublished studies of mice in our lab, we found that glutathione deficiency or lower levels of glutathione, it tends to occur in the black six mice after approximately 65 weeks of age. So remember in humans, the glutathione levels seem to drop around 45 years old. Therefore, this paper supplemented the mice from the age of 65 weeks for the rest of their natural life. The other important point that popped out to me is that no studies have reported an increase of mammalian lifespan by supplementing with glutathione. So again, I don't want to be supplementing with glutathione because there's a lack of evidence that it actually works. On the contrary, supplementation of glutathione was actually found to accelerate aging and shorten lifespan in C. elegans, which is a type of worm. Because different organisms maintain different concentrations of glutathione, providing extra glutathione is associated with risk of inducing replicative stress. This is what we were talking about before. We want to try and aim for that balance between oxidants and antioxidants. So glycine and NAC supplementation, it avoids this problem because it allows the cells to auto-regulate, as in to maintain those levels, to control the levels of glutathione. Glycine and NAC supplementation, it doesn't interfere with the cellular auto-regulation. And this is an important point to understand, because the cellular requirements of glutathione in each organ is constantly and dynamically changing. So again, we don't want to be supplementing with liposomal glutathione because we don't have long-term safety data, and there's no data so far that it actually improves health span or lifespan. And the final thing that I want to mention about this study is its limitations. So although this pilot extrapolatory study provides proof of concept that glycine and NAC supplementation from a younger age can increase length of life, this was done in a relatively small number of mice and the data is not reported in every organ in the body. Essentially we need larger trials and I'm really hoping that the interventions testing program trials the combination of glycine and NAC. We can see from the interventions testing program that glycine alone does seem to extend lifespan, but maybe we'll get even greater benefits if we combined glycine and NAC, like this new paper is suggesting. So what am I going to do in response to this new paper? Well, to be honest, it doesn't change anything for me. I'm going to stick with my original plan to add in NAC and either glycine or serine once I reach the age of 50 years old. Because remember, our glutathione levels, they appear to be fine up until the age of around 45 years old. In terms of dosage, I plan to take one and a half grams of both serine and NAC. But why did I choose serine instead of glycine? Well, the human combined metabolic activator studies, they used serine instead of glycine. So serine is converted in the body to glycine, but during this conversion, it may help drive forward the folate cycle. So let's sum things up. Glutathione is a powerful antioxidant in the body, but its levels appear to decline around the age of 45 years old. It looks like we can support our glutathione levels by taking the building blocks of glutathione, so NAC and either serine or glycine. Personally, I will avoid liposomal glutathione because we don't have much evidence that it actually improves health and we don't have long-term safety data. And overall, I plan to take one and a half grams of NAC and serine twice a day when I reach the age of 50 years old. So please let me know in the comment section, what did you think of this video and what are you going to do about supporting your glutathione levels? Are you going to wait for more data or are you going to start supplementing with NAC and either serine or glycine? A massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. And if you haven't already, please check out my clinical trial fundraiser for rapamycin. Until next time, thanks very much.